Good morning. Welcome to a NYNJPA weather forecast discussion for Friday, September 14th, 2012. We have made it through the week. Let's check out to see what the weekend has for us. And it looks like it's going to be pretty nice out there after dodging a shower tomorrow morning. So let's get into the weather forecast. So here we are at 8.30 a.m. And we have temperatures basically ranging in the mid-50s to lower 60s. Of course, Messina is our cold spot at 52, and Philadelphia is our warm spot at 65. Overall, throughout the entire northern mid-Atlantic, the general theme is that we continue to have dew points in the 40s and 50s, and that means our moisture content in the atmosphere is relatively low. And that's good because we have low humidity, and that also means that any cold front that approaches the region is going to have less to work with as far as precipitation potential and the ability to produce widespread showers, and I'll discuss that in just a moment. Also notice our winds right now are light and variable, but I expect them to develop more from the southwest this afternoon, anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. Overall, a very pleasant afternoon is developing, with temperatures ranging from the upper 70s to lower 80s throughout the entire northern mid-Atlantic. Now, when we take a look at the latest radar, you can see it, it's pretty clear around the northern mid-Atlantic, but you can see all these showers starting to develop over portions of the Great Lakes and entering into the Ohio River Valley. These showers, for the most part, are going to start to collapse as the main lifting force behind these showers starts to lift up into the St. Lawrence River Valley in Canada. So really, these showers never really make it to the northern Atlantic as this cold front starts to collapse. And when we take a look at the infrared satellite picture, you can kind of see that starting to evolve here. Our cold front over the Ohio River Valley down through the Mississippi River Valley starts to lose its punch and it's become more stationary in nature and not really all that impressive as far as the air mass behind it. But the cold front is clearly much stronger over portions of the St. Lawrence River Valley and the eastern Great Lakes. And notice we have another strong disturbance over the central Great Lakes and northern Great Lakes. When we see the water vapor satellite pictures, it comes even more clear that we clearly have a very impressive trough digging into the Great Lakes, but it's not that impressive. It doesn't dig as far south into the Mississippi River Valley, so that means this cold front really loses punch, and when it moves through the northern mid-Atlantic, we'll get the benefit of a cooler air mass, but not really much in the way of precipitation potential. So yes, there is a threat for an isolated shower early tomorrow morning, but I think most locations will remain dry. And for the most part, we'll see increasing cloud cover and a wind shift from the southwest to the northwest tomorrow morning. That's pretty much about it. Oh, and much cooler temperatures. However, what this water vapor satellite picture does show me is an increase in activity in the subtropical jet stream. And that is going to be very important for our weather forecast as we move on through the next couple of days. We also are seeing strong indications of deeper troughs and more impressive troughs starting to dig into the eastern United States. Now, I warned this was going to happen a couple of weeks ago when we started to see what's called a negative EPO pattern. Basically, a big trough around the Aleutian Islands in Alaska starting to establish itself. And when you see that it's starting to establish itself, it works like a domino effect. It leads to a ridge in the west, a trough in the east, and this trough becomes more impressive, more established. You throw in some tropical systems, and you start ending up with a rather interesting pattern for the fall. And yes, maybe even for the winter. We'll have to wait and see, but there are certainly some interesting indications out there. So let's take a look at the model guidance. So using the European model guidance from the Penn State EWAL website, an excellent website for all your model needs. Here we are for this evening. You can see that our cold front and upper level trough is starting to approach. It'll move through late tonight to early tomorrow morning. Notice the trough though. Notice all the lifting is focused more towards the St. Lawrence River Valley. And so that really tells me for the most part that we're dealing with a environment where the best dynamics are shifted more to the north and that means that your precipitation potential is pretty limited. Also notice the moisture content in the atmosphere is rather dry here along the east coast. We do have some showers but really it's not all that impressive. Your best precipitation precipitation potential, should I say, is clearly over the St. Lawrence River Valley and around Quebec. So putting that into perspective, as we move forward in time, our cold front moves through, high pressure takes control. Saturday afternoon on through Sunday is going to be absolutely beautiful with clear skies, light winds, and temperatures in the lower to mid 70s. Low humidity, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. So if you have plans outside, you want to go to a football game, you have a picnic, whatever. 
It's going to be absolutely beautiful in the afternoon, a little bit of cool in the morning. Looking for temperatures in the mid to upper 40s over the interior, lower to mid 50s along the coast. Really though, it's going to be a really pleasant afternoon. Some One of the best afternoons we've seen in quite some time for Saturday and Sunday. Now remember what I said about the subtropical jet stream becoming more active. You see these disturbances right here? Keep an eye on this in the forecast because as we move into later part of Sunday, notice here we have this disturbance. Notice we have this trough here. We have a, another impressive upper level low here. This might be a little bit overdone, but let's just say that it's uh, well represented. We have a, a ridge, I say, starting to build over south northeastern Canada and Greenland. And of course, we have our trough over the um, Gulf of Alaska and portions of the Aleutians. So moving forward into Monday, these two disturbances start to interact. Now, this is where it gets pretty interesting because that disturbance is pulling up a good deal of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. You can see that both at 850 and 700 millibars. So we have plenty of moisture lifting up into the northern Atlantic. We have a trough digging into the eastern United States. And then as we move into Tuesday, that mid-level disturbance, the subtropical disturbance, should I say, interacts with the trough, shoots up towards the St. Lawrence River Valley and towards the eastern Great Lakes. And that means our, our storm is going to develop in the Gulf of Mexico and shoot up towards the eastern Great Lakes. And that means rain and plenty of it. This is not an indication of winter pattern or anything of that nature. It just shows that the subtropical jet stream is becoming more active. And as a result, we're starting to see a deeper trough in the eastern United States. All of these little pieces are coming together. And it's going to be interesting to watch to see how that all interacts in the months ahead. But as you can see, for Tuesday, it looks like we're going to be dealing with a rather nice rainfall threat, uh, rainfall event for Tuesday, possibly an inch, maybe over an inch of rain, depending on how everything evolves with the moisture advection with this low pressure system from the Atlantic. Temperatures, of course, will be in the mid to upper 70s with periods of rain. Beyond that point, while our trough really establishes itself over the eastern United States, we get much cooler for Thursday and for Friday. Well, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, should I say, with temperatures in the lower to mid-70s for highs throughout the entire northern Atlantic. And, of course, our low temperatures in the 40s and 50s. We are heading towards fall pattern, and I would not be surprised if we start to see some indications of maybe even some widespread frost starting to develop over the next two weeks, and even the potential for a little bit of snow well to the north of the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area, of course, but let's say around, let's say, northern New York, maybe somewhere around the Great Lakes. Keep an eye on things. Things are going to start to really evolve with this weather pattern, I think. And we're going to start to see some interesting pattern configuration start to establish itself over the next several weeks. Well, that is your forecast discussion for today. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. You can follow the latest weather information at nynjpaweather.com and nynjpaweather on Twitter and Facebook. And as always, if you're looking for even more in-depth information, you can always sign up for a premium membership at nynjpaweather.com for only $10 a month. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe out there.